Do you set English learning goals or are you more the kind of person who likes to fly by the seat of their pants? Which means you're more spontaneous. You don't like to make a plan. If you were to guess which of these I am and what I do to learn my second language and now my third and fourth language, what do you think I do? Welcome to English Coach 3 T's. I'm Tanya and today I have six tips to help you set better goals and two bonus tips of what not to do. And even if you're not the kind of person who likes to set a goal, this video will be great for shadowing and learning vocabulary and other things. So let's jump into those six tips. Number one, while I am the kind of person who is pretty spontaneous, I also like to make plans, but I also like to fly by the seat of my pants. So I like to suggest that you use goal setting as like a guideline for what you're going to do when you're studying or learning English. For me, even though I like to be quite spontaneous, it really helps me to have something that can guide me, especially in times when I don't have a lot of time and I need to know what I'm going to do without spending a lot of time planning. The other thing about this tip is that I like to think of goals as sort of a tracking system. If I have a goal and I reach that goal, then I know that I'm working towards or going towards what I want to achieve. I think that number two is equally as important as number one, which is what is your why? This has become a popular way to say, why are you learning English? Why do you want to reach this goal? It's very important because there are many ways to learn English. There are many different things you might want to do first, second, or never. And so knowing what it is you want to use your English for will help you to know how to set your goals. And it's going to help you to know how often you want to practice and things like that. Over the years since I've been teaching, I've heard people say they're learning English for their job or maybe they have grandchildren or other relatives or friends they want to speak to in English. Oftentimes people are learning English so that they can travel. Or I've even heard people say they're learning English so they can read books in English or watch movies or television shows. You might have another reason, or maybe you have more than one of these reasons. Let me know in the comments below why you're learning English. For me, I started learning Spanish just because I enjoy learning. Of course, it is a part of my job because knowing how to learn a language is very helpful for those of us teaching a language. But when I picked up Korean and German, I had totally different reasons for why I want to learn those languages. So my goals are completely different. My goals for learning Spanish have a lot more to do with being able to speak with people and have a conversation. My goals for learning German are about my heritage because my father's family was originally from Germany. And when I decided I wanted to start learning Korean, it is more like a hobby for me. I'm always interested in learning and learning another alphabet is extremely interesting for me. I heard that learning Korean was something that was doable. This is what we say when we mean it's something that you can achieve. Maybe it doesn't take a lot of effort. Now I will say that learning the Korean alphabet has been quite a bit of effort for me, but I've heard it's a little more doable than say learning the Chinese alphabet. What do you think? Do you speak one of these languages or have you learned one of these languages? Let me know what your thoughts are. Number three might be one of the most important things that I think you need to know about goal setting and I think you're not going to hear about this from other teachers and coaches that are teaching goal setting. There's a lot of reasons for that, but first let me tell you what it is. You've heard me say before, you have to find what works for you. To me, this is just common sense, or we might say intuitive. It's something that makes sense for whatever you're doing. But you'll hear a lot of teachers and coaches, like I said, who will tell you this is the way it has to be done. They have their reasons for that. And if it works for you, I say go for it. But that falls right in line with what I'm saying. You have to find what works for you. Like I said, 
I like to be spontaneous. I like to do things right in the moment without giving it a lot of thought. But it also helps me to have a plan, like I said before. Because of this, goal setting where there has to be a certain way and a certain time, and if you don't do it, there's some sort of negative thing, that doesn't work for me. What works for me is knowing that I started here and I have moved towards what I want to achieve. I'm curious what works for you, or maybe you haven't given a lot of thought to it. I would recommend you give some thought to it. And if you're like me, you might find that the way you set goals changes over time. I have been fairly goal oriented for most of my life. I find that in some ways I'm more goal oriented than I even realize. But like I said, if there is some sort of negative thing attached to not achieving something at a certain time or a certain way, I found that that really doesn't work for me. And in fact, in a way, it works against me. Working against you means it may cause you to not only meet your goal, but maybe even go in the opposite direction. When I was younger, I really loved to set a lot of very detailed goals. While I still write my goals and I still write some details, these days I find that it helps me to have a little more flexibility in my goals. Number four, I think is especially important for those of us who are learning a second, third, or fourth, fifth language. And that is that we need to have goals in all four quadrants, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. Again, if you're like me, you have some of those that you like more, or maybe it's more natural for you to practice it. And there's probably at least one that is a little more difficult for you. If you've been following me for any time, you know that writing in my second language is my most difficult area of learning. Because of this, I set my goals for that area a little differently for the other areas. My goals for speaking are a little more aggressive. When I say aggressive, I mean I push myself a little more and it helps me to actually get more done. When I push myself a little more aggressively in writing, again, it usually is something that works against me. So I know that it's a better idea for me when it comes to writing to write goals that are very achievable for me and add on to that. So that might look like instead of saying that I'm going to write every day, 365 days a year, Look at how often I wrote the year before and see if I can increase that a little. Since I've started setting my writing goals this way, I've increased my writing a little bit every year and I found it to be much more helpful. If you have any suggestions or things that have helped you with this kind of thing in your goal setting, in your learning, I would love to know more about that. I think we can always be helping each other. I actually already talked a little bit about number five, which is setting goals that are outside your comfort zone. Something that's outside of our comfort zone is not comfortable for us. I know that a lot of teachers and coaches recommend that you really push yourself outside of your comfort zone in all areas of learning, but I have found that has not worked really well for me and it usually doesn't work well for my students. I think we need to have some goals that are in our comfort zone, something that we are comfortable doing and we know we will continue to do it, but it's also a good idea to have some places where we push ourselves a little outside the comfort zone because so much learning happens outside the comfort zone. For me, some of the things I've already mentioned, like the writing goals, are outside of my comfort zone. Another one that I picked up last year was to record myself speaking. I have to say that I'm still a little outside my comfort zone when I record myself speaking in my second language, but it's getting more and more comfortable for me, more and more natural. Again, I have been more flexible with myself, even though I purposely set a goal to kind of push myself outside of the comfort zone, I'm more flexible with myself because I know that that is what will keep me going towards whatever it is I want to achieve. So 
even though my goal is to record myself speaking, if I'm having a day where I'm just not into it, I'm too tired, I'm overwhelmed, whatever it is, then I'll practice my speaking without recording myself. This is a bit of a disadvantage because it's harder to track, but the good thing is I'm still getting the practice and that's really what counts in the end. I know that I keep saying a lot of these are so important, but number six is also really, really important. And that is take what you like and leave the rest. If shadowing is a tool that you use for learning English, this is a great phrase to shadow. Take what you like and leave the rest. If you need a little more help with shadowing and what that is, I'll leave a link to a video I have on that below. So take what you like and leave the rest means whenever you're listening to a video, a teacher, a fellow learner, whoever it is, whatever they're saying, take the things that you like that you think will work for you and just leave the things that you don't think will work for you. You don't even need to tell them that you're going to leave it. Just move on. Maybe you'll try those things at another time. Maybe you won't. One of my pet peeves, which I mentioned before, pet peeve being something you really don't like about something. One of my pet peeves is teachers or coaches that say it has to be done a certain way. This goes completely against step six and step three for that matter. And actually, I think it is kind of counterintuitive to the way we are, or most of us are, as humans. Counterintuitive means it's just not natural. It isn't what you would normally think of intuitively. And so I like to build in some of our natural responses to things to our learning process. If there's something I've suggested in this video that you think is going to be very helpful for you, great. Take that and start using it. And if it doesn't work, go ahead and trash it, get rid of it and try something else. If there's something I said that you think, I don't think that's going to work for me, no problem. You don't have to do that particular thing. In fact, I found that if you pick up just one or two things from each of the videos or things that you're listening to, you're probably learning quite enough. If you have heard some tips that you think will be helpful for you, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Sharing our videos with people you know who are learning English is one of the greatest compliments you can give to us. So be sure to share the video with friends or family that are learning English. I said that I was going to give you two bonus things of what not to do. These things will kill your English learning process. They will kill your goals. And so it's really important to at least try not to do these two things. The first one is comparison. What I mean is comparing yourself to other people and how they set goals, what they're doing, what their level is, how much time they spend practicing, things like that. Of course, there's nothing wrong with asking people for suggestions and ideas. In fact, I think that's a really great way to learn anything. But when we start to compare ourselves, it starts to make us feel badly about ourselves and it tends to take our self-esteem down with it. Self-esteem and confidence is an important part to learning anything and it's definitely important to learning a language. So try not to compare yourself. And if you do catch yourself comparing yourself, which I think we all do, then be gentle with yourself and remind yourself that it's really not helpful and move on to finding a way that you can be more productive. The second bonus tip is what I call analysis paralysis. So this rhymes, it makes it easy to remember. I just mean don't analyze something so much that it keeps you from doing something towards your goal. Paralysis is when you get completely stopped or you can't move or you can't walk. If we say that someone is paralyzed, we typically mean they can't walk or it could include moving their arms or other parts of their body. Analysis paralysis does the same thing. When we analyze things too much, it paralyzes us and keeps us from really doing the stuff we need to do to learn what we want to learn. So 
it's okay, again, to analyze things a little bit. It's okay to have a plan. It's okay to look at what you're learning and look at what works and what doesn't work, but try to find a balance so that you can use the time you would use analyzing to learn more. There's so many parts to learning. And one of the things I think that you should really remember when you're setting goals is to look at what you have already achieved. And goals will help you do this. It's that time of year for me when I'm looking back over the year to see where I was and look at where I am now. This is actually comparing, but I'm comparing myself to myself which is way more effective than comparing ourselves to someone else. In fact, when I look at where I was and where I am now, typically it's something that gives me more energy and I feel really excited about continuing so that I can make more progress. If you would like to spend some time with me live on Zoom, I'm currently working on a program that will be coming out in the middle of January. This will be three one hour live classes where we'll work on goal setting and being consistent with your English learning. And what does that actually mean? If you want to be on the waiting list, send me an email. My email is tanya at englishcoach3ts.com. It's here on the screen and you can find it in the description below. I hope that there was something that helped you in this video. If you're ready for another video similar to this one, check this one out. Or if you're ready to work on vocabulary and things like that, check out one of our stories here. And I'll see you in one of those videos.